This section of videos is all about visualization in MATLAB. The importance of being able to visualize data and visualize equations cannot be understated, particularly for debugging and testing and evaluating new code. MATLAB has a powerful graphics engine, making it a really useful tool for data visualization. And being able to use the MATLAB graphics engine is crucial for becoming a proficient MATLAB programmer. In this video, I'll show you a concrete example of how visualization can make the difference between incorrect and correct code. Then I will introduce you to the basics of MATLAB graphics, including working with figures, axes, and subplots. But first, I'd like to show you a few pictures of MATLAB plots. All of these pictures were downloaded from mathworks.com, which is the MATLAB website. These images illustrate a few of the possibilities for plotting in MATLAB, ranging from simple scatter plots to filter response characteristics to 3D plots to 3D volumes. This is just to give you a bit of an idea of what MATLAB figures look like. Now I'd like to show you a motivating example. Let's say you want to implement the Gaussian function in MATLAB. Here's the formula for the Gaussian. Now the question is, do you know what this function looks like just from looking at the formula. If you've taken calculus courses, then you can probably guess the general form of this function by considering how it behaves at the limits and close to zero. Or you might know from a statistics course that a Gaussian is also called a bell curve or a normal distribution. This is a relatively simple function and a simple scenario because many people are familiar with the Gaussian. And of course, there are many more complicated examples where it's really difficult to visualize the function just by looking at the equation. But I wanted to show you a simple example. So let's say I want to implement this function in MATLAB. So I translate this equation into MATLAB code, and it looks like this. Now I can run this code. MATLAB doesn't produce any errors, so if I wasn't thinking about plotting it, I might just assume that I've implemented this equation correctly. However, I'm a good programmer, and I know that I should never trust my own code without doing some sanity checks. In this case, plotting is a really important sanity check. Now, at first glance, this might seem okay, it curves up in the middle and it goes down on both sides, which is generally what you'd expect for a Gaussian. But if you look more carefully, you can see the y-axis that this function goes from 0.999 up to 1. And if I scale the y-axis to go from 0 to 1 using the set function, which I'll teach you about in a few videos, then you can see that this function definitely does not look like a Gaussian. In fact, it's basically just one all the time. So something clearly went wrong here, and I only figure this out by looking at the plot. Actually, the problem is a simple order of operations mistake. In this case, MATLAB is interpreting this s squared to be part of the numerator and only the two to be part of the denominator. So the solution is to add some parentheses here around what should be the entire denominator. Now I can run this code again and plot the function, and now we get what we would expect from a Gaussian or a normal distribution. The crucial lesson here is that I made a programming mistake that did not produce any errors. And the only way that I detected this mistake was by plotting the function. If I didn't use MATLAB's graphics engine, it's possible that I wouldn't have detected this error and I could have had very serious negative consequences for the rest of my code. So with that as a motivating example, I'd like to introduce you now to the MATLAB graphics plotting engine. The first thing to know about plots is that they are contained inside figures. A figure is simply a window in which plots are drawn. You can create a new figure by typing figure. Notice that the figure opens inside the figure's window. So this is a figure's window, and there are multiple figures open inside. 
I mentioned in a previous video that I prefer to have all of my windows docked so my figures appear inside the MATLAB desktop environment. You can also keep them undocked and then they are floating around and you can put them in a separate monitor, for example, or elsewhere on your uh, desktop. You can close a figure either by mouse clicking on the X or by typing close. Opening up a new figure, I see that this is called figure 1. And if I type figure again, it will open up figure 2, figure 3, and so on. You can also specify explicitly which figure you want to open by including a number in parentheses after figure. So this will open up figure 10 and figures 100 and 103. Notice that this command does not mean to open 103 figures. It means to open one figure that is numbered 103. To close all the figures, I can type close all. Or I can type close and then again in parentheses exactly the number of the figures that I want to close. In this case, I'm using an ellipse to show you that when you type an ellipse of three uh, periods in a line of code, MATLAB will allow you to continue that line of code into the next line. So here I close two of the figures, and now I'm going to close all of them. I'll tell you more about the plotting function later, but just to illustrate, here I'm using this function to um, plot four lines. And what I want to illustrate here is that the axis in which the plots are drawn takes up almost the entire figure window. But what if I wanted to show more than one axis in the same figure to compare different kinds of data? This is done using subplots. Subplots allow you to define a geometry of smaller axes within the figure. You create subplots using the subplot function. This function takes three inputs. First is the number of rows to create. Second is the number of columns to create. And the third input is the axis that you want to work on. So I open up a new figure. Notice that there's no axes on here now. And now I type subplot 1, 2, 1. So that means there's going to be one row of axes, two columns of axes, and all of the following commands will plot to the first of these axes. So here I have subplot 1, 2, 2, so the same geometry, but now instead of plotting to the first subplot, I'm plotting to the second subplot. If you have fewer than 10 subplots, the commas are optional, so this line of code is equivalent to this line of code. You can have a mixed geometry by changing the first two inputs. I'll open up a new figure. For example, let's say I want to have a tall subplot on the left, and in the right column I want to have a smaller plot only on the bottom. As long as the new geometry doesn't conflict with the existing figure layout, then MATLAB won't change the old axis to generate a new axis. So here I plot some random numbers into a tall axis over here, and now I'm changing the subplot geometry from one row and two columns to two rows and two columns, and now I'm going to plot into the fourth subplot. So for a two by two matrix of subplots, this is going to be one, two, three, four. So I'm going to draw a new axis here. If there is a conflict, MATLAB will remove the existing plots to generate the new ones, and that you'll see here. Here I'm going to request a subplot geometry of three rows and one column. That conflicts with these existing subplots, so MATLAB will remove those two to add the third. In this cell, I'm integrating subplot geometry with a loop, and at each iteration of the loop, it's going to plot a different time series into each of these subplots. Notice that each time I rerun the cell, it generates a new figure. I don't like having so many figures open that show the same thing. This can get really uh, difficult to look at, and it can become confusing. 
Therefore, something I often do is specify the figure number. Let's say I want this to go into figure 3. And then I type CLF, which stands for clear figure. That will wipe everything off of the figure, including removing any settings that you may have specified for that figure. So now I'm going to close all of the figures. And now I can rerun this cell multiple times, and it's always drawing the data into figure 3. In this video, I illustrated the importance of visualization in MATLAB. I told you about figures and axes and subplots and how to define subplot geometry. Now you know enough of the basics to be able to really start learning how to use the MATLAB graphics engine.